Hey folks, welcome to week 14 of GID 109, Intro to Web Design. How's everybody doing? All right, so we are knee deep into project two, working on our third deliverable. Let's take a look at the module to see where we are at. So of course your third deliverable is both the design phase and the prototype phase for your project. Now of course we've done this phase before in project one so you should be familiar with it. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at uh, some prototyping in a second over next D. But at this point your visual design for your uh, excellent e-commerce site should be all done. Um, and so you should start working on your prototype this week. Uh, because this is our second to last week. Week 15, of course, is finals week. We are where we are basically just turning in our final presentation of our work. There'll be more information about that coming up soon in a uh, announcement, so keep an eye out for that. But for now, we're going to start working on our prototype for Project 2. Now, we do have one consumable this week under media. Since we are talking about toy design, if this is an area of graphic design that you are interested in and you're hoping to get an internship at some point, there is a link here to internships uh, available at Hasbro. Hasbro, of course, is a local company. They are in uh, Pawtucket, Massachusetts. And so you can certainly check out this page here and see when they list their internships. Uh, they do hire a fair number of students every year to work uh, in their internship program, and it's a pretty great program. So if you're interested uh, in toys, as well as, of course, the world of design, which presumably you are, uh, then maybe Hasbro is a place for you to look. All right, so there's that. You can certainly check that out on your own. Now, like I say, the main goal this week as we are finishing up Project 2 Deliverable 3 is the prototype stage. Now, you remember from last time in prototyping, prototyping is where you have finished up all your various screens, all your various artboards in terms of visual design. Here we have my Dave's Delectable, Delectable Donuts uh, mock website here. Um, and so uh, now you're going to switch over from design stage to prototype stage where you can go ahead and add those sort of blue tendril links all the way through. Now remember, once you get those set up, they are invisible until you sort of choose your artboard. And you can see all the links that I set up here between the home page and the various other pages. So just some good rules of thumb. Make sure that you are creating a link that goes back to the home page from every single page, right? Each one of these uh, goes out to various pages and then goes back to the home page. So make sure that you have that set up all around. So for example, over here on my order page, I haven't set that up yet. Uh, I just have my order page is going back to uh, some other pages. So I do want to set that up and make sure that uh, I am picking that up and moving that up to the home page from my logo. Now, clicking on the logo to get back to your home page is a very accepted sort of paradigm. Um, in terms of where people expect a logo to go when you are clicking on it, so that's perfectly fine. Uh, you can, of course, include a home link in your uppermost navigation, but that might take up real estate that you really can't afford to spare. So clicking on the logo to get back home is usually a pretty smart idea. And even though you've set up a bunch of links like I have here, make sure to go back and check them all. Remember, when they're gray, uh, you're just sort of seeing what the link is, but when you click on the link and it becomes that blue tendril, then you can go over here to the interactive palette and change the way the link acts. Now, most of the time, you want to be able, particularly on a desktop site, you want to be able to switch from one screen to the next simply by tapping on it, which is the equivalent of clicking on it with a mouse button. Um, and then the transition should be sort of automatic and dissolve is perfectly fine, but you can change the animation to whatever you would like. So for the most part, dissolve is good from screen to screen, but maybe when I get to say my order page, uh, I want to change that. So if I'm clicking on order here, uh, maybe if I click on that instead of dissolving, maybe I want that to slide up from the bottom. So you can simply change that. And of course, you have to repeat these on every occurrence. It does not automatically uh, change it uh, on each occurrence. So you do have to make sure you go in and change that uh, appropriately. But once you've got that done, you know, you can really sort of mess around with the timing of the transition as well as how it goes and where it goes. So remember, once you've got your transitions in there, click on your homepage artboard by clicking the name of it and then go to the play button up here. And then you can test it out in this fake browser, right? You've got this 
fake web browser which allows you to test out your link. So I can go to the specials page, go to my cake page, frosted, filled, go back to my home page by clicking on the logo. Oopsie, that's a bad link. I got to fix that one. It went to the cake page. So this is why you test this stuff out. And then if I hit order here, see it slides up from the bottom, which is what I just set it to do. Now maybe I can go in here and add some more links because I've only got the contact uh, replication over here. Maybe I'll go ahead and make another one and make it shipping and then another one and make it payment. And I can add some of those in there. So that's important uh, that we get that. So make sure that in all cases, you're going to where you want to go. See, that should go back home, not there. So by testing it out, you can see where the flaws are and fix it. Okay, now the other thing I'm going to show you is you can also do some in-screen transitions and these are kind of like fake transitions. So if we look over here to these two screens, this is just two different versions of the home screen. There's the original one with this girl here holding the donut up to her eye. Uh, and then this is the same page, but I just changed the photo. And you'll see that I have the three dots. So what I'm trying to replicate here is sort of a slideshow. Now, uh, slideshows can run automatically, naturally, but I'm going to replicate the idea that if I click on it, uh, it will uh, transition to the next photo. So all I did is I simply duplicated my home screen. Uh, I made the three dot graphic over here and the first dot I made the pink color um, so that that shows that that's the first out of three photos, right? And then I duplicated the entire home screen. And remember, you can duplicate entire screens, entire artboards, uh, simply by uh, using your black selection arrow, clicking on the name of the artboard, and then option drag, and you can make a complete duplication of it. It just moves it right down like that. So once I duplicated it, then I just swapped out the photo. I dragged in a different photo, a uh, different woman holding a different donut. Uh, and then the linking is from object to page, right? So back over here in prototyping, I clicked this photo, and I dragged a tendril down from this photo down to this page. So I'm going to get rid of that and do it over again just so you can see it, right? So click the photo, drag the tendril down to the page, and now the transition will be from this version of the home page to this version of the home page. Now the trick here is making it look as though the picture is sliding from one side to the next. So the trick is that with that blue tendril chosen, I'm going to go over here to the interaction palette and you can have it happen a few different ways either by dragging or voice command or whatever I'm gonna leave it at tap just for the heck of it and then the transition uh, I am going to uh, sort of do auto animate right and we are gonna have it uh, ease out right actually let's do a transition and Instead of auto animate, and the destination of course is home page number two, and then I'm going to have it slide, uh, slide to the left, and that'll make it look as though the picture is transitioning from one spot to the next. Uh, and then you can adjust the duration if you want. This is 0.3 seconds, which is probably fine, and then we'll test it out. So again, click on the home page, hit the play button, and now when I click on this picture of the girl, it looks as though it transitions. Uh, from one to the next. Now that switches the whole screen, so maybe that's not my best choice. Now I'll go back, turn that blue, and then maybe we'll do auto animate and we'll set it to ease out and we'll see how that goes. Okay, try that one out again, choose the home page. And sometimes it's just trial and error, right? You just want to sort of check it out. Ah, that makes more sense. Now, instead of the whole screen moving, it looks as though I'm just going from picture to picture. And then uh, before we got here, I reversed it so I can go back to the home page. And that works pretty good too. So it looks like I'm transitioning from the pictures. Now, of course, if I made a third duplicate of the home page, which I did down here, I could add yet a different photo and then transition to that one. So certainly check out ways to create links and transitions inside existing artboards after you have finished all your artboard to artboard links or your object to artboard links. So, you know, if you're confident in your prototyping ability at this point, since this is our second project and it's a little more complex, uh, once you've got all these major object to artboard links done, if you've got a little bit of time and you're like, let me do some fancy stuff, let me make some photos look like they're scrolling, or let me make it look like my order page is sliding up from the bottom, or I'm doing an overlay or whatever, mess around with some of those and see how that goes. Uh, it's just trial and error, just make some, ex some additional graphics, a lot of it's just duplicating and changing certain objects. 
but certainly try it out. See how it goes. The more complex you can make this, the more realistic the prototype is, uh, the better off you're going to be, okay? All right, so like I said, hopefully you've finished up your visual design by now, and you can spend this week really playing around with your prototyping to try to make this as uh, detailed and robust a website prototype as possible. All right, so get working on that. If you need any help, of course, you can always email me, show up on my Zoom office hours. I'm always happy to talk to you, and uh, I will see you soon.